Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now remember, we are live at the Hyatt Regency this morning and tomorrow for a very important regional symposium as we look at violence as a public health issue, the crime challenge. And joining me this morning is the Minister of National Security for Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Fitzgerald Hines, as we look at not just the trends, but the implications for crime and violence in TNT. Minister, good morning. A very good morning again to you, Kimberly, and to your viewers and listeners around the globe. Nice. Minister, how are you this morning? Are you ready for an exciting two days of conversation as we tackle crime and violence? Well, the conference would be exciting, but I too <laughs> am excited because it's about new thoughts, new ideas, heading off perhaps in new directions. Yes. And I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Minister, let's start at the top in terms of the crime and violence we're seeing in the country. Now, I know one of the things we're going to be focusing on is the social issue um, as opposed to just the policing in, uh, initiatives. What was the reasoning behind that sort of approach to this uh, symposium? About, well, several years ago, I can't remember exactly when, but several years ago, I asked the security services, the strategic services agency in particular, to run an estimate, if they could, on the number of illegal firearms that they assessed would have been in Trinidad and Tobago. They spent a considerable time doing a serious bit of intellectual analysis based on the statistics, of course, and they arrived at a figure of about 12,000. That was, at that time, that's probably about five years ago, very, very alarming to me and to all of us. Uh, recently, uh, an international organization doing the same kind of thing region by region country by country suggested that we might have far more than that in terms of illegal weapons um, in terms of ambulance carriages of our citizens in Trinidad and Tobago there are about 2,000 last year 2022 there were about 2,432 circumstances where ambulances took victims of violence to our nation's mm -hmm. hospitals. And at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex, for an example, they would have treated in 2022 2,800 and plus people for or as victims of violence. Every day, the newspapers, the talk shows suggest that there's a tremendous and growing level of violence in Trinidad and Tobago. And within recent times, we saw that manifesting itself among school children in the many videos that alarmed us and we've been discussing at ad nauseum. So anecdotally, it is quite clear that we are becoming more and more violent. We are interdicting more and more firearms of, of, of military type, um, of, for, for military type operations, assault weapons. Yeah. So the evidence is quite clear. And the question is, we have been doing what we have been doing for decades in terms of responding to crime and violence. And um, we having those kinds of circumstances seems to be exacerbating. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we decided as a nation that we will take a look on this situation again. And we want to consider, Prime Minister Rowley suggested that we consider uh, violence as a public health concern. And we began to plan a national consultation on the matter. The same thing is being replicated in every one of our brother and sister countries in the region. I heard the Prime Minister of St. Vincent, uh, St. Lucia, Guyana, the President, they're all crying out. They have the same problem, the influx of these weapons. They're having, like Trinidad and Tobago, not the stabbing and the chopping, but now multiple victims, double murders, triple murders, quadruple murders, on a murder scene, 74 spent shells, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, the society is seriously traumatized, and that's only that kind of crime. You have other types of crime being put upon the people of the region, mm -hmm. and therefore they responded to Prime Minister Rowley's call, and now we find ourselves with a regional symposium on the question of crime and violence, mm -hmm as a public health concern. Yes. And Minister, if I may, you mentioned, you, you gave us some figures, and I'm wondering, are you able to tell us exactly how many may be homicides and how many may be those different types of crimes? Well, I can tell about? you, the police have revealed that last year, for example, and this has been consistently so for a number of years, but last year, of the 605 murders that we recorded in this country, 87% of them were executed with firearms. 
and in many cases, assault military type weapons. And as I told you, operating as Minister of National Security, collaborating with other stakeholders, including the customs, we are spending a lot of time and a lot of resources because we recognize that our border security is of critical importance as a twin island state with over 264 illegal points of possible illegal points of entry around here, bays and inlets and that sort of thing. So as we interface with the customs, we recognize that even our legal ports of entry, our seaports and our airports, are very vulnerable, particularly when you have public officials, including law enforcement and customs officials and employees of the various courier companies and so on, mm -hmm. operating in Trinidad and Tobago. When they are complicitous, a lot that you spend and invest to protect your borders comes to naught. So as we tackle one issue, we discover that there are three or four others to treat with, but we are treating with them. For an example, we signed on to two international best practice models for dealing with improved border security, CCOP and AIRCOP. We have populated both of them with highly trained, highly motivated persons, cross-agency, including immigration, customs, police, defense force, and they are on our borders now working. We have invested, as you know, in a national radar system which works on a regular basis as late as last week. I would have had about three reports um, where the radar system would have identified what they call uh, targets of interest mm -hmm. and having intercepted them, found illegal things coming into Trinidad and, and, and the fight continues. Yeah. So it is a regional issue. So we now see violence as a public health issue. And this conference is designed to share ideas from the intellectuals and the stakeholders across the region. So the same way we as a people, as individuals, as communities, as families, as elements of our society, as countries of the region, as countries of the world, in the same way we collaborated, made sacrifices, closed our borders without protestation from the neighbor, made vaccines mandatory in some cases, in some cases optional, closed down schools, shut down businesses, told people how many people should gather, how many not, you must wear masks, where you could go, where you can't go. We tolerated, we did all of that yeah. in response to COVID-19. And if we see crime and violence as a public health issue, hopefully all of us would be willing to make that kind of sacrifice in that kind of whole of society, whole of government, whole of region response to this violence problem hopefully to bring relief to you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and of course, the region. Now, Minister, I understand that you are speaking on the second day of the symposium, which of course is tomorrow. What uh, expected outcome are you hoping to get from that, uh, from that presentation? Well, there are different aspects of this conversation, you know, for example, and let me just refresh your memory in terms of what we're doing. As we see crime and violence as a public health issue, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, for an example, we are looking at the different approaches that all of us have taken to it, the role that our social sector, our education sector, our, our, our juvenile justice sector, because the age cohort for criminals and criminality seems to be heading south. In other words, younger and younger persons seem to be getting involved. I used to hear that nine and eight year olds were involved in gangland activity in the United States, for an example. And I heard recently we have youngsters exposed to this in Trinidad and Tobago, and no doubt the region. So the juvenile justice platform, how you manage children, all of the different stakeholders will be coming to bear here this morning. As for me, the segment I will be speaking on will be Trinidad and Tobago's efforts in terms of a major plank of our government's policy, which is being implemented by the Ministry of National Security's strategic plan is one of the issues is the question of restorative justice. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with those who find themselves incarcerated? How do we treat with them? 
rehabilitate them and to prepare them for re-entry into our society without the risk of them harming us again as they had did, done initially to have ended up there in the first place. And that is what I will speak on along with my Caribbean colleagues yeah. tomorrow morning. Now, Minister, as I have you here today, I know you would have mentioned some of the, the improvements that were done on the, um, at the Forensic Sciences Center in terms of the resumption of the DNA testing and the ballistic testing. Can you share some more to that as well? Well, of course, in so far as the ballistic the, the uh, Trinidad and Tobago Forensic Science Center is con concerned where they deal with DNA, where they deal with um, ballistics, firearm analysis, and so on. That's where we use the science in the detection and the prevention of crime. So that any improvement, as you heard us celebrate last week, in the scientific method to assist in crime detection because one of the strategic goals of the Ministry of National Security in our strategic plan, which we are following faithfully, is the question of improved detection rates. There are many, many murders that have gone undetected. So in that regard, we have established, for example, a cold case unit, and you could see, including about a month ago, where they charged someone for 207 murder. And it is based on the science. So we have been working steadily on improving the techniques and the capacity and the delivery at the Forensic Science Center. And as you heard the head of the Homicide Bureau of the Police Service indicate that that improvement has impacted powerfully on the police's capacity to investigate and to solve and to detect and prosecute crime. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the Trinidad and Tobago Forensic Science Center is one of the four elements of national security which interfaces, articulates directly with the criminal justice system. And I focused on those four, and to the extent that they improve, is to that extent we improve the criminal justice system in Trinidad and Tobago, which is part of the problem when there are delays and you have constitutional challenges as a result of delays and justice not being delivered on time, it impacts the whole thing. And then the deterrent aspect that you seek to get in prosecuting crime is completely lost when people have to wait so long. So we are really focused on what has to be done, and we are tackling it in a whole of society, whole of government, whole of stakeholder, and now whole of region. Approach. approach. Well, thank you so much, Minister Hines. I know that you're going to be getting a lot out of the two-day conference. All the best with your presentation tomorrow. And we look forward to see what comes out of that policy document and that action plan that I know is going to be put together after the conference. So thank you so much. I thank you very warmly, equally. <laughs> God bless. Have a good one. Thank you. And that was the Minister of National Security, the Honorable Fitzgerald Hines, just sharing about the crime and some of the statistics that we're seeing are playing out in TNT and as it relates to the regional symposium. You're on the now morning show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.